Good morning, Buon Natale. That's what they say in Sicily and in Rome. Buon Natale, hey, Buon Natale. Um, I grew up, I had some good Italian friends. You ever try the tri-colored cookies that are in Italian bakeries? Ooh, 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 ooh. Tri-colored cookies. And those of you who don't live in New York or you don't go to an Italian bakery, New Yorkers know tri-colored cookies. I know someone who's addicted to it. Addicted. They can't eat one or two. They're like me with other things. No, they're, they're ready for a drug program. You put them around tri-colored cookies, and it's not a pretty sight. Merry Christmas to you. We're continuing reading the pre-Christmas story found in Luke. The announcement of the birth of John the Baptist, who will be the forerunner, the one who heralds the way for Jesus to be revealed. And an angel has appeared to old Zechariah while he's doing his duty as a priest. Listen. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Why would God put that in the Bible? What can we learn from this? I find two interesting thoughts there. Number one, this all happened to Zechariah while he was doing his tour of duty as a priest in the, what's it called here, of Abijah, the, the priestly division of Abijah. So there was rotation that of the priests. Only the priests could go in the holy place and tend the, the altar of incense and the lamp, uh, the, the lights and the food, the table of shoe bread. So... There was a schedule, and he'd been doing it for forever. And now he's old and doesn't have the son he prayed for. But guess what? He's doing his duty. The will of God, the plan of God, his responsibilities. He's not a quitter. He's not like, life didn't work out the way I wanted, and I'm the center of the universe so who cares about God and serving him, you know, the way we get? No, he's doing his, and this thing is going to happen while he's doing his duty. There's a good one. Do your duty. You sing in a group, you're in a prayer meeting, just go and do what you're supposed to be doing because God is watching. God was watching every time. And now, isn't it interesting, God doesn't come to him in a dream at night. God comes to him when he's doing what he was called to do. Very good thought. Number two, when the announcement, the angel appears, everyone's praying and worshiping. Isn't that the way it so often is? He is burning the incense. All the assembled worshipers are outside praying. Then an angel appears. How many times do great things happen when we pray? There's visitations not of always of angels, but visitation of God. I was just reading about a, a great devotional writer, a commentator, who said that um, he was working at Moody Bible Institute, and he called for a night of prayer, and they were praying. This is decades, decades ago, a long time ago. And uh, the people gathered, and they had their meeting, and then he just felt like inviting some people back to another area they could just pray. And, and their prayer got lit on fire by the Holy Spirit, and they prayed till 3 in the morning. They left home just revived. 
Because when you spend time in God's presence, you don't get sapped of your strength. No. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, and we go from strength to strength, and glory to glory. So many great things happen. And out of that meeting, he writes, at least five were called to the mission field. The call of God came when people were eating Fritos. No, when they were praying. You can't limit God. He does anything, anytime. But this is his modus operandi. This is the way God usually channels his blessings, his communication, when we just take time and spend it with him. Talk to him. Wait. I preach to myself now. Jim, more time before the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be still. Wait. Pray. Talk. Listen. But be with God. And then the first sentence the angel says after, don't be afraid. Zechariah, he says, your prayer has been heard. What prayer? The prayer you've been praying maybe for decades for a son. I've been watching every prayer. You know God stores prayers in bowls in heaven? That's the image given to us in the book of Revelation. The prayers are kept in bowls. That's how precious they are. But I don't feel anything. I know, but you prayed sincerely. You prayed humbly. You prayed in faith. I prayed in faith. And God took notice of that prayer, stored it away. And now the appointed time has come. See, there's prayers, God hears, he stores, and if we'll just keep believing, God says, boom, now the moment has come. Your prayer has been heard. So I would encourage you all, praying for sons or daughters or something. Oh, pastor, not weeks, not months, years. Años y años. Just know this. I want to encourage you on this and encourage myself. I have a, a fulfillment of a prayer that I just prayed last Saturday that came to pass, but it's too long a story to give you. But it's my reminder to you, God answers prayer. And with God, nothing is impossible. And he loves to pick people who can't have babies to give them the baby. Not Messiah, but right next to Messiah the forerunner. Your prayer has been answered. Praise God. Keep praying, keep believing, and let's see what God will do. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.